Hello, and thank you for attending my presentation. So uh, here, what I would like to tell you about is to tell you a little bit more about the work that we have been doing in using machine learning to uh, accelerate the development of empirical force field that can be used to simulate by molecular dynamics uh, glasses. The, the reason that we need uh, empirical force fields in order to, to simulate glasses and other materials is that typically if you want to simulate a given materials uh, by um, a Monte Carlo simulation or molecular dynamics, everything will rely on the accuracy of the underlying uh, potential energy. The potential energy that dictates the energy of the atoms as a function of the distance between them or as a function of the angle between them is really going to be the, the key bottleneck that dictates the accuracy of the simulation. And for this, um, one option is to use uh, ab initio simulation, which can be very accurate, but we can also be extremely computationally expensive. And so what we are trying to do here is to use uh, machine learning to develop some uh, empirical force field that are fully analytical, so that are very fast and very computationally efficient to calculate the energy between the atoms. The, the problem with this is that those types of empirical force field is that they, they rely on some parameters and those parameters needs to be adjusted uh, so as to, to get the, 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 the maximum accuracy, the, the, the largest accuracy when simulating uh, materials like, like glasses. So for example here we are interested in developing some force field for uh, silicate systems, silicate glasses, um, which typically can be well uh, modeled by using the, the Buckingham potential. So the Buckingham potential has the, the following formulation. So it relies on the, um, the fact that uh, atoms in uh, silicate glasses typically uh, form some ionocovalent bonds. So they can be, uh, their interaction can be well modeled by using first the, the Coulombic interaction and uh, some terms that um, capture the, 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 the Van der Waals interaction and the electronic repulsion between the atoms. And these types of uh, formulation typically can uh, yield a very good agreement with available experimental data or with uh, ab initio simulation. The problem of this is that we need to find the values, the optimal values for those parameters, like the partial charge of the atoms or the, the pre-exponential terms, the, the parameter rho, the parameter c. Those parameters, uh, their value is critical to ensure that the simulation is accurate. And those parameters needs to be um, adjusted for every pair of elements. So we have a lot of parameters that needs to be adjusted uh, in order to maximize the accuracy of the molecular dynamic simulation. So here, uh, what we are working on is specifically the case of silica, um, SiO2, which is um, uh, a case for which we have 10 parameters that needs to be optimized for the, for the force field. And to optimize those parameters, what we need to do is to define a cost function, uh, which can be, for example, de uh, defined based on uh, some properties that are computed by um, molecular dynamics and that can be compared with experiments or by comparing uh, molecular dynamics with some uh, um, DFT or some ab initio molecular dynamics results, which serve as, in this case as a reference. And uh, the goal here is to, uh, so to, we define a cost function which captures the, the difference between the property that are computed by uh, molecular dynamics and those of the, of the reference that we are using, for example, the experimental reference. So we want to minimize this, this cost function. So this can be uh, formulated just uh, simply as an optimization problem where we have a function, which is in this case is the, the cost function, which depends on some parameters. And in this case, those are the parameters of the force field. And we want to find what is the minimum of this function. What are the specific value of the parameters that will minimize the, the cost function? And the problem with this is that the cost function is typically a very rough function that has very uh, various local minima. And if you want to find the global minimum of this function, it strongly depends on the, where you start the, the optimization from. If you just rely on conventional uh, optimization, like for example, a gradient descent or steepest descent, the minimum that you will find is just simply going to be the, the nearest local minimum. So the optimization will strongly depends on the, the starting value of the parameter and you have a very high chance to get stuck into a local minimum and rather than finding the global minimum of this cost function. So here what we are, um, uh, what I would li uh, like to present to you is the, um, an active learning uh, parameterization method that can be used 
to uh, efficiently parameterize force field to find the optimal values of those parameters while uh, addressing the, the, the limitation and the concerns that are associated with uh, the traditional optimization methods. So our approach is as, is as follow. So first, uh, we need some kind of reference, the reference that we can compare our simulation with and that can be used to calculate the cost function. So for this, um, we uh, conduct some uh, ab initio molecular dynamic simulation, some uh, Car Caprinello molecular dynamic simulation. And this gives us a reference trajectories. And then we uh, attempt to simulate the, the very same material, farpal silica, with uh, this time classical molecular dynamics, assuming that the atoms interact with each other with uh, a classical force field with this uh, Buckingham formulation. So initially, we don't, we don't know what is the optimal value of those parameters. So we start with some, uh, some trial parameters, some tentative parameters, and we are going to, um, by active learning, uh, iteratively optimize those parameters. So the next step is to define the, the cost function. So here to define the cost function, rather than directly computing the, the force or the energy between the atoms and comparing that with um, ab initio simulation, what we do is that we directly look at the structure of the glass. So we compute the, the pair distribution function, uh, which in this case uh, captures, uh, starting from a given atom, what is the probability to find another atom at each distance. And so in this case, so we, we compute the pair distribution function between each pair of elements by uh, the, the reference uh, ab initio molecular dynamic simulation. And we try to optimize the, the parameters until the, the molecular dynamic simulation, uh, the classical molecular dynamic simulation gives us the same structure of the glass, so the same pair distribution function. And so we define the cost function simply as the difference between the, the reference pair distribution function and the pair, distri pair distribution function that is given by the, the molecular dynamic simulation for which we are trying to optimize the value of the parameters. Then once we have this uh, pair distribution function, uh, so we can calculate the cost function. And the, our goal is to minimize this cost function, to find the value of the, the, the force field parameters that minimize this cost function. And this is what, we, uh, that is what is achieved by active learning, which I'm going to um, um, uh, talk more in the, in the following slides. And so what this active learning method does is that it predicts at each step what it thinks is the optimal value for the force field parameters. And then what we do is that we test the, the, those force field parameters that are prescribed by the active learning optimization method we um, compute uh, the, the pair distribution function that is uh, given as a result with those forced parameters, we recompute the cost function. And based on this, we, uh, based on this new combination of parameters together with its associated uh, cost function, this uh, increased the size of our data set. And we use this, those new data that are generated to refine our machine learning model that tries to map the, um, the value of those force fields to the corresponding uh, cost function. And based on this, we keep uh, prescribing new optimal values for those force fields until it converges and until we find uh, the global minimum of the cost function. So the, the active learning parameterization for this, we use a Gaussian process regression and uh, Bayesian optimization. So the way it works is that we start with uh, some target uh, values for those parameters for the force field. So those are different sets of uh, parameters for which we know the associated value of the cost function. So we know how accurate the, the simulation is for those different parameters. Then the first thing we do is that we fit uh, this uh, relationship between parameters, values, and cost function with uh, a Gaussian process regression model, so a GPR. And what this does is that it's, it tries to interpolate the relationship between the parameters and the cost function, which is the, the blue line here. But um, the main advantage of the, the GPR techniques is that it also predicts the confidence interval of the prediction. So it's aware of its own uncertainty and it's able to predict not only uh, the interpolated value of the cost function for a target parameter, but also the uncertainty of the prediction. 
So based on this, uh, based on the uh, on this combination of both the, the the predicted value of the cost function and its confidence interval, what we do is that we uh, we use a Bayesian optimization. So we calculate the expected Im improvements, which tells you the optimal balance um, between exploring and exploiting this uh, this this function to find what is the optimal value for the parameter that is the most likely to minimize the, the cost function. So this relies on finding the best balance between first exploiting the model. So for example, here, uh, the model is predicting that here there is a minimum uh, for, the cost, for the cost function. So we are exploiting this model. So uh, the expected improvement function is uh, telling you that here, this point has a very high potential to be a minimum uh, of the cost function, but we also want to explore um, this uh, this this function. We want to be, we want to explore the range of parameters for which the uncertainty is uh, is pretty high. So, for example, in this region and also in this region, the uncertainty of the model is pretty high because there is a low density of data points. So, it's possible that there might be a minimum here in the cost function that we are missing due to the fact that we have a, a high uncertainty. So we need also to explore um, the, the model in order to, to reduce the uncertainty of the model and make sure we are not missing any uh, minimum for this function. And then based on this, so we calculate the expected improvement function. And this tells us what is the next optimal set of parameter that we should be trying. So then we try this uh, set of parameters, we uh, conduct the molecular dynamics, we get the associated cost function. So this gives us a new data point, a new value for the cost function for a given value for the parameter. And this gives us more points, which allows us to refine the, the Gaussian process regression model and to uh, prescribe a new set of parameter that you should be trying next, which is the, the, the most optimal set of parameter that uh, achieve the best balance between uh, exploiting and exploring the, the model. And at the end, once uh, this optimization is converged, we will get the optimal parameters that gives us the, the minimum value for the, for the cost function. So this is an example of what it looks like. So here I'm showing you uh, an optimization with uh, simply two parameters, just as an illustration, where you have one parameter A, which is the parameter A in the, in the exponential term, and the, the charge, the partial charge of the silicon. So what you can see here is that um, this cost function, which is indicated by this color here, is a pretty rough function. It's not like a, a very uh, monotonic function. There are several local minima. And this path here in the, the white dashed line shows you the path that is followed by this active learning uh, optimization. And we can see that with simply a few steps, the, um, this active learning is able to explore quite efficiently this landscape and then finds the, the global minimum of this function. So if we, if we track the evolution of the cost function, the cost function decreases decreases pretty fast and then eventually converges, which indicates that we have found the, the global minimum and that we, uh, we, uh, we have found the, the optimal values for the parameter for this function. This is showing the, the result for the case of silica. So here I'm showing you the, um, the pair distribution function that are uh, computed by ab initio simulation. So this is the reference in black. This is what we are trying to achieve. In red, this is the, the result that you get with a, a conventional molecular dynamic simulation that is obtained with a classical uh, potential, the, the BKS potential, which is a very common potential used to simulate silica. And in blue, this is the result that we get with our machine learning approach. So we can see that we get a very good agreement, which is uh, virtually as good as uh, what is given by ab initio simulation, but we obtain this as a at, a at a fraction of the cost because uh, this classical molecular dynamics is much faster and much computationally efficient than uh, ab initio simulation. So just to conclude, so this active learning framework um, uh, is uh, offers a convenient method to uh, accelerate the parameterization of act um, of analytical force field. And the, the, the real advantage of this is that it, uh, this parameterization does not rely on um, expert knowledge or intuition, and it's really unbiased. It, it doesn't depend on the, 
what is the initial choice uh, of the, the initial training set or the initial value of the parameters. So this approach can be used to refine existing uh, empirical potential. Uh, so we can use this method to optimize this, their parameters without um, um, affecting their computational efficiency. So here are a few references if you're interested and um, thank you for attending this presentation.